All right, so we got some some dynasty trades from you, the people. One, two from from the Twitters, uh, and one from the Discord. Uh, we got Jamie coming in. He's uh, he's saying year one he made it to the ship and lost. Year two made it to the ship and won. Year three sold everything over twenty five <laughs> and and came in last. Now he's into year four, hoping to rip it into year five. He has lots of receiver depth. Do I tear up a few? Will hit RB hard in the next draft. So, uh, this this roster has uh, Anthony Richardson, Jack Charbonnet, Jonathan Brooks, Marvin Harrison, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, Kyle Pitts. Doesn't specify if it's tight end premium or not. It's not tight end premium because Pitts is only projected to get eight points. Gotcha. Uh, George Pickens, JSN, Kyler Murray. So it's super flex. It's start three wide receivers and two flex, and then an additional super flex. Sam Darnold on the uh, on the bench, Blake Watson, Bucky Irving, Keaton Mitchell, Kendra Miller, Jalen Polk, Rashad Bateman, Johan Dachin, uh, Demario Douglas, Theo Johnson, Hunter Henry, Tucker Craft, Drake May, Xavier Leggett, Javon Baker, and then he Woo. has some first two first next year, a second, a third, um, and a fourth. So, what do we think here? Do we think that we should be pushing some of these wide receivers into more depth. He doesn't seem to be concerned about the running backs right now. He feels good about his plan to go hammer the running backs, which is, you know, as if we stand right now, should be a should be a good running back class. But by the time we get there, there might only be two that are any good. General thoughts here, gentlemen, of ways to pursue for Jamie here. Well, first of all, it's a big starting lineup. So sometimes I mean, when you got three wide receivers, all of a sudden that tightens things up. Um, and then you got two flexes, and would it not be in tight end premium? You're a lot less likely to want to start up to to flex a tight end, so that's going to tighten things up. Obviously, he's super young. He just said he just started over and and sold everything, and you know, so everybody in his lineup is super. I think his oldest person in his lineup is Kyler Murray, so everybody is super super young. Bringing in Jonathan Brooks as a rookie in his starting lineup, Charbonnet's backup, you know, so like he's not. He's not looking for a whole lot of points out of his running backs this year. Anyway, when you're trading around, I'd keep that in mind, Jamie, that you're, you know, if you're talking about tearing up, Xavier Leggett and Javon Baker look really good, and Drake May look really good on his taxi squad. He does have the two firsts in 25. He's got two firsts in 26, so he's he's set up for the future. When you play around tearing up, like when he says, I have a lot of wide receiver depth, but I don't, you got five wide receivers in your starting lineup, and that's solid, but I don't see the, the wide receiver depth anywhere else. You know, like you got Leggett and Baker, rookies that are completely, Polk. they're Polk. So, yeah, Polk probably going to get plenty of snap percentage. Um, Rashad Bateman, you know, Ravens just paid him, didn't have Bateman, to. Bateman, Pop Douglas, and Dotson um, all, all could be, those all, are could, all be. could come around, but those could, are could be, be, but that's not, you know. So, the only thing, the only thing I see in this lineup and this on this team right now, as far as doing something with wide receivers on the bench, like you got to, you got to find the Washington Commander fan, you got to find the Dotson lover. Demario Douglas, like he absolutely did all he could do in a terrible Patriots offense last year. And then they just bring in two more wide receivers, uh, you know, to really, you know, and sign everybody. Like they got, they got a ton of wide receiver. They got to let somebody go and Demario, and he could still, he could still, I mean, there's a, there's a fun clip of him running up a hill super fast, you know, going around like his, he could still come out and do some damage, but like, I, I don't see the trade value on his bench, you know, uh, Javon Baker, you know, you just drafted him in the third round of your rookie draft. You're not getting anything for him right now. Uh, you might, you might get a preseason clip and he might crush in a preseason game and you might be able to flip him. Somebody you drafted Xavier Leggett. It doesn't tell me when, at what point, what pick you used on him. If you got him at two eight, then nobody was a believer. If you took him at two one, you were the believer, and and you didn't give anybody else a chance to make plant their flag. You know, so I don't see a lot of tearing up and tearing tearing up from his bench right this second. You know, Rashad, Jalen Polk, you, there might be a believer out there, but you took him. You know, so I don't think you're going for more points in your lineup from a wide receiver right this second while you got Zach Charbonnet and Jonathan Brooks is basically your only startable running backs. You know, you do have, uh, I think I saw, does Kendra, did I see Kendra? Yeah. I see you had, you, you do have Kendra. So something could pop off for, you know, if, if something happens with, if Kamara gets hurt, Kendra, Kamara is still to, Kendra is not going to be, dominating the ball for the saints even if he starts to break out like he kamara's still going to be there catching every getting all the high dollar third downs and two minute drills and everything so like if kendra even breaks out 
he could be starting for you for sure over Zach Char- Charbonnet, but I just don't see you competing this year. So, you know, you might as well you, you get the most out of your first round draft picks next year. You know, uh, you're, you're first anyway. I don't see why you want to, everybody's super young. I don't think you're in any hurry to win. So I would just keep that in mind as you start to try to make trades. You know, you don't want to bring in a 28 year old, 29 year old veteran that's not aging gracefully. I don't know if you see a trade to be that he can make right this second, Big D or Casey. If you do, like I, I don't see the the. There's no trade bait on this bench for as far as trading a wide receiver and tearing up. Yeah, I think this roster is set up for a um, you know end of training camp, first couple games of the NFL season when you're going to get some pop. There might be some trade opportunity there. Um, you know, to, to tear up, somebody starts out slow. Um, you know, one of your guys goes off, one of your new England receivers or something goes crazy. I think you could probably, you know, you might be able to get some value, but right now, as it sits after your rookie draft, I would just sit on my hands, man. You've got a great roster. I know that, you know, Pitco just laid it out, but I don't see you being in the top. Well, let's say the bottom three no, <laughs> with this roster. I think you're, I think you're going to be in the playoff mix. Um, and that first quarter of the NFL season, I normally quarter my seasons. So the first four games, I think it's going to be telling to see what direction you want to go. But as of right now, I don't, I don't think I would move anything because you're not going to get, you're not going to get top notch value for any of the, the positions on your bench, um, nor any of your starting lineup um, that you would want to move off of. And at this point, you might as well just wait and see what you got, see what points develop. And then you're going to have to make some decisions. You don't need all three New England wide receivers, you know, you don't, you know, there's, there's a couple positions here. You talked about Dotson. There's some options there where you're going to be able to move on from them. And I think that's probably going to happen week two, week three of the NFL season, to be honest. Uh, may, maybe if there's some injuries or something, or, or somebody does some spectacular catches in the preseason or something to that effect. But I think for right now, you're just going to wait and see and maybe do some mocks or something if you get bored. But uh, yeah, I would, I would just hold for now. Yeah, I tend I tend to agree. So let's uh, let's keep it moving to the next question here. Uh, we got Joseph coming in. He said he finished in last place last year. Used some picks in twenty five um, and twenty six. His first and second in, in those, um, and some vets to build a partial win now team, but stayed young at the same time at at some positions. The only thing I don't have is RB depth. Would you use any pieces on the bench to pick up an RB? Uh, this is Dynasty. Super flex. Uh, so the roster goes like this. Lamar Jackson, Jonathan Taylor, ETN, Olave, Garrett Wilson, Laporta, Devontae Adams, and Justin Herbert. So Ooh, boy. that's a strong lineup there to start. Make it be sweaty. And then and on, a on short the, starting lineup too. Yeah. You know, yeah. Two wide receiver and only one flex like Big D was saying earlier um, when he and I were talking about the roster. So only one flex and a, and a super flex. So, a, you know, short Huge. starting lineup. Yeah. And then he's got Daniel Jones, Raheem Mostert, uh, Brian Robinson, Roma Dunze, Cortland Sutton, Rashad Bateman, John Dotson, JSN, uh, Jordan Addison, Zay Flowers, Jatavian Sanders, and Hunter Henry. Um, so, I this mean. This team has the wide receiver depth that the other team thought he had to, <laughs> to make trades with, right? Like, yeah. this is the team that that first team thought he had to make trades with. You got a short starting lineup, and you got a bunch of, your, your whole starting lineup's full of studs. So, you're obviously in good shape. Whatever trading around you did, I think you did a great job. And But the question was, what am I doing about my running back depth? And to have Taylor and ETN in your starting lineup is ridiculous. Um, so that's solid. And Brian Robinson and Raheem Mostert is really good depth on those two running backs. And you don't have – you got so many wide receivers, like you should you, – you're not going to have to worry about starting a, a running back in a flex spot. It's not super – There's like only said, one flex spot. There's not three wide receivers. There's not well, a bunch of flexes. Well, I guess the super so. flex is a flex if you can try right. to not have a quarterback in there. But, right. you, you know, um, so if, if – you know, you, you got yeah, but he's got he's got the comeback player of the year and Daniel Jones on his bench. There you right? go, <laughs> there you go. But so you know, with you have the young stud in Rome, who uh, you know, I'm not looking to trade. But if you're if you have a obvious you have a win now team and you have Rome and Dotson and JSN and Addison and Zay Flowers, so you have a whole team's worth of youngsters on the bench. The problem is trading like you're not going to get value on Jordan Addison right this second because people think he only crushed because Justin uh, Jefferson got hurt. But all you can do is ask a wide receiver to step in and play. And he did that. So I'm not I'm I'm 
I have no problem with Jordan Addison right now, but the most, the vast majority of the public have a problem with Addison. So I'm, I'm not selling him. If there's any quote unquote buy low window there, I'm not, I'm not selling Addison. Say flowers. We expect to take a nice little step forward in the second year of the offensive system in Baltimore and second year for him and second year with, with Lamar and Lamar's got, got to be more comfortable with the system now. And the Ravens should be hungry. You got, Der- you know, Derek Henry there. I think Zay flowers is going to have a bump. So I probably wouldn't trade him before the beginning of the season. Somebody in your league might love Jason JSN. If Casey Myers is in your team in your league, you can get good value for JSN from Casey Cortland. Or Sutton, you, if you know, you've obviously already had your rookie draft. So, uh, you could because you got Rome on your team, but you could cause somebody might give you a, a projected late second round pick for Cortland Sutton, or he could be in a in a trade to as a kicker to make a trade go over the top for a running back. So if you wanted to take a an Addison, or you found the right guy that liked Jay, Zay Flowers, you could go get you another running back with a Flowers and a and a Cortland Sutton, and you wouldn't miss those guys off your bench because you got a a small starting lineup to put together. You only need three wide receivers at the most every week, unless you don't have a second quarterback. So four at the most, if you've got bad quarterback problems. So, I mean, you could, you could move around in that, in that area. If you'd like to, I don't think you necessarily need to have five, you know, quote unquote, really, really good wide receivers on your bench when you have three studs in the lineup already. So you could, you could work with some of those wide receivers. You got plenty of options there. It's just, yeah. They're not. I, th- I think this is a prime roster to go out and get a Kyron Williams. Uh, we have a show that will be coming out talking about him as a buy. I think that you've got the depth on your on your bench where you could probably go and grab him if you want that extra running back depth with uh, with a lot of upside. I don't think you need him. Um, you could also go the Montgomery mount route, uh, James Conner. It doesn't show you draft picks, cheaper. but yeah, um, you know, th- there's there's a um, Ford uh, uh, in Cleveland. Much, I think there's cheaper. enough enough spots out there where you can you can make some make some movement, but you don't need to. I think the the like Bitco was just kind of recapping there. You've only got one draft spot, so you don't you just need some healthy bodies there. Etn and JT are are top notch. As long as those guys are healthy, you're not putting anyone else in front of them anyways. Maybe if you got Kyron Williams, you could have uh, lineup difficulties because then you'd start scratching your head. But, you know, Mostert and Robinson is, are great backups, and I think you can always go buy, you know, somebody at uh, week five, week six that's starting to struggle. You could probably buy a, a veteran to to shore up your running back game. But, but again, I'm you know, just like our last roster, I don't, I don't think I would really do much with this roster because there's not a really big value spike unless somebody – you know, again, keep an eye on injuries, keep an eye on that kind of stuff. Cause if somebody goes down, there might be a buying opportunity. You know, you might be able to move court on Sutton. If you know, another wide receiver goes down in, in Denver or there's some kind of injury weirdness that happens, you might be able to do something there early, but I think it's going to wait. You're gonna have to wait till that first couple, couple games. Um, again, the first quarter to really have a good idea of what, what you should do. Um, if anything, you got a solid, <laughs> you got a solid lineup from from um, soup to nuts, man, and then and yeah. then you got the you got the bench to prove it. So I don't think you really need to do anything. Um, just kind of keep an eye out for value picks in the in the in the um, veteran running back room, or uh, you know you could tear up and get somebody who's cheaper right now, like a uh, Kyron Williams um, or or somebody in that ilk that's right around the ETN yeah. uh, Taylor phase, and and really just kind of bulldoze your way to a championship. Yeah, Big D, you kind of read my mind there. I, you know, Big Co was talking about Flowers and Addison. You can test the market. If you really want to do something and you want to pick up a higher-end running back, I think Kyron or Achan would be two guys that I would I would shoot for in here and see who you can get the better value on, if it's Addison or Flowers, and see which owner has has those guys. Flowers right now is 5'5", five, five, Achan's 5'1", five, Kyron 4'11", Kyron slipping, some people don't like HN. So those guys are kind of right in the neighborhood of mm-hmm. guys that you, if you wanted to do some swapping, those I think those would kind of be my targets of what I, I I really like where you were going with that big D. But I don't think you, you know, it's boring to keep on coming in here and saying it, but you know, <laughs> I don't think you really have to do anything. You have some running backs to play. If those other guys big D laid it out, like you're probably there's not really any running backs that you're gonna pick up necessarily outside of maybe HN or Kyron Williams that will circumvent Taylor or ETN on any given week. Um, and then you'd basically be playing him for Devontae Adams, which, 
you know, we don't we don't exactly know what's going to be there, but he's been excellent pretty much regardless. Sure. Um, yeah. Real quick, Big Co. Um, but I don't I don't think you need to do anything. If you get in season and you want to and you want to do something, or you, you one of these guys is banged up and you need some more running back depth, I think that's going to be easily obtainable to to go ahead and grab you an older running back. You know, the the the, the Connors of the world and the um, Kamara's and the Mixins and the, you know, so, some team's going to be hurting early and they want to just get rid of that guy. And if you need that, then you can go get it. Uh, Josh but, Jacobs, Kenneth yeah, Walker, but you yeah. don't, you don't necessarily need to go with the, with the big gun right off the rip if you don't want to. But I, the ideas of those two guys, the running backs to trade for, those would be kind of my targets with those guys. Big go. Yeah. And this much depth, I, I, I wonder if this is a 12 man league. Um, but if you, let's just assume it is, with such a short start lineup. The key thing is he said he finished last last year and he did a lot of trading around. He wanted to stay young at some positions and build win now. But like the the vast majority of your starting lineup are, are young studs that can score you points right now. The problem with it is, is yes, when you have that much star power and Jonathan Taylor and ETN, you might have a two year window where like they're they're young stud right this second, but like they're really middle aged stud. So I understand like, hey, let me go win now. But you, you, you've got so much future. Olave, Garrett Wilson, Sam Laporta in the heart, in the trenches, your wide receivers and tight ends are so, all these are guys. They're super young. Herbert and Lamar Jackson are not old by any means. Um, Herbert was just on our elite buy list show that you got to check out. So, I, you know, you have so many options. And with that amount, ding, with that amount of stud young wide receivers that are not necessarily treated as studs as such yet. Um, on the bench, you do have your options, but like I, the one one you've rattled off there, Big D, Kenneth Walker. Like you could take Zay Flowers plus something next year, and maybe get a Zay Flower, go get a Walker from somebody, or maybe somebody, maybe you can go JSN and Zay Flowers and get a Walker plus something back. You know, it, you could move around and still have some quality depth and put and pick up something else. But if Re, if Raheem Mar- Mostert is healthy, and that is, that is an if, but the last two years he's been healthy and he's been killing it. If Raheem Mostert is healthy, and Brian Robinson is going to get action. I mean, Austin Eckler, he's a, obviously a stud running back, but he's old and he was beat up last year and he might come back to hardcore. But Mostert is your kicker there as Mostert could easily be like pressing his way into your starting lineup somehow just because the Dolphins and what he's been doing. He may lose a step. He's got like three steps to lose because he's so fast. Um, so yeah, I, just, I don't think you have to do anything right now, like you said, but you do have options with that much depth on your bench. You do have options to make moves. Um, and that would be a kind of a way I'd look at it. You, I think case, I mean, if you could buy an HN for that, like buying anybody that's not old right now is huge, but you know, you also will have the, um, chance to pick from some quality veterans from teams that are losing by week six, you know, and you're, you're, unless you have some kind of injury chaos that breaks out, like you are obviously going to be in the top two or three teams in this league, whatever happened last year to finish last place, whatever, like you obviously have an absolutely studded out team and you yeah, have that's quality. What I was just going to highlight there was the, the last year it looked, you put your starting lineup at a comment under there, Herbert, Berkeley, Warren, Mostert, St. Brown, Sutton, Komet, Danny Dimes, and Pickett. I mean, you've already done the work, brother. You've right. already you've already brought in Lamar. You've already brought in Jonathan Taylor. It looks like you brought in uh, Olave. I mean, you've you've done the work. So just 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 sit back and and coast and and see what happens. And you don't really need to do anything. But I, I think you're you're set up. So good like good it. job, Joseph. All right, let's go to the last one. This is a Discord question. This is playtime. Uh, he wants to know if he should buy another starter. Uh, for the for the team he has or just kind of let it ride so more questions like this uh, which you know we we love this is from the from a discord from a five dollar holler kind of guy uh, we'll be hitting more roster reviews and we do those on the patreon side of things and we got a, a, a fun new way to do that with dynasty daddy on some of them uh, coming your way and there'll be plenty more roster reviews but we like we like the questions and everything and and we like to be interactive we're going to probably do some live shows where we just do kind of stuff like this you send us what you got and we'll dissect it you know kind of live on air uh so make sure you like subscribe comment below so this last one he wants to know if 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 he needs to make any moves or if he should just ride out um oop, that's way too close can't see that yeah you gotta zoom out um, he's got trevor lawrence Brees hall jonathan taylor drake london t higgins brandon Ayuk, sam laporta roma dunze adam thielen sometimes i think these people submit things just because they want to you know just show you how good their lineup is 
Um, <laughs> roster bait a little. Trey Lance, which <laughs> roster bait. Keep him on there. So we got a one quarterback league. Bryce, yeah, Bryce, Will Levis. So he's he's got a, a bunch of quarterbacks here. Roshan, Elijah Mitchell, Cedric Tillman, uh, Malik Washington, Thrash, Bub means. Um, Mike Williams, KJ Osborne, Josh Palmer, Jared Wiley, Theo Johnson, Jake Ferguson, and Isaiah Likely. Um, and then he doesn't have a ton of picks in the he next spin him, two. He spent them, baby. He spent them. Drafts. He's got that lineup, but his first and his first and second round pick is gone for next year, and his first round pick is gone for 2026. So he's been out there in the trade streets, burning up uh, draft picks, making it happen. He did say he bought Kamara on this team, so Kamara has been added to this team. Okay, I like what he paid for Kamara. He paid a third next year and a second the following year, so the two wasn't even until 2026. Um, so he's asking if he could buy should buy another starter now. Or just ride for a minute here. I don't know what you're buying a starter with. You know, yeah. you already yeah, you already spent. You don't have any draft picks to spend, really. Uh, you got a third next year, and that's it. And you got a two three in 2026, and that's it. It looks like it's not tied in premium because the projections on the tight ends are low. Because you got your best two pieces on your bench are tight ends, but you can't even. You know, it's not tight in premium, so nobody's going to pay for that. It's a one quarterback league. You got Will Levis and Bryce Young. I don't see anything. I don't see any currency to use um, as far as buying a starter, unless you're going to tear down off of somebody, you know? Now, if you get blessed with health and Roman Dunze get some, get find some targets in there between DJ Moore and uh, Keenan Allen, you, you, you're going to be super solid, but yeah, I mean, there's not any running back depth. You got two running backs on the bench and it's, Roshan Johnson and Elijah Mitchell, which both will be waiting on an injury to be to do anything at all. Yeah, the best two bench players are Ferguson and Likely. Palmer could be a starter for you if things work out in uh, the Chargers for him. Mike Williams is there. He was slipping. I didn't see him. So if Mike Williams is healthy, you got a starter on the bench. You're spin out, dude. You know I don't I don't know what else to go by uh, in the season. That 2025 20, third might work out for somebody that's just selling their last final piece off of a rebuild and it may be you know if, if james connor looks gassed and he's like got one foot left and he's got one game in him and you need him for the playoffs i mean I, you know I, I really can't put the only thing i can see that you can actually use that's not gonna that wouldn't kill you is tear you could tear down and get a you probably could get a, a, a ransom for sam laporta you know you could tear down off of laporta if you wanted to and come up you got two tight you you could plug ferguson in if you didn't even if you didn't even get a tight end back you could plug ferguson in but if you and if you got a mid-range tight end back and ferguson was your starter now like that's that's the only thing i mean because you're not gonna get maybe five weeks into the season drake london's killing it and you can turn him into two players you know trade him for two really good players um t higgins nobody really gonna knows there's no respect on his name like it should be right now uh, Yuck, the question marks are until he signs up to stay with the 49ers, uh, he's still, and maybe he needs to leave to go get more targets from somewhere. I mean, you know, Ayuk's a, gr a great player, but, I, you know, unless you're tearing down from a running back, nobody's giving you anything for Trevor in a one-quarterback -qu league, you know. And, unless you're tearing down from one of those stud running backs you got, you got two of the best five dynasty running backs. If you want to tear down from one of those cats, you know, then you can turn those guys into another starter. Are you going to move off Laporta? I just don't see any other currency for you to be spending to buy a starter. The only way you get another starter on this team, I feel like, is to, A, unless you're going to spend 2027 20, picks, which I think that's way too far out to be able to spend. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you should be able to have 2027 20, picks on the screen right now. So unless you're coming off of Brees Hall, Jonathan Taylor, or Sam Laporta to go down and, you know, and turn some quality into quantity, I don't see what, what move you could even make on this team. You've already spent all the money to put them there. I agree with what Bicko is saying. I mean, there's there's some opportunity here, but you're going to need the spike. You know, there, Higgins is a is a decent piece, in my opinion, to have some trade bait um, where you can get a couple veterans if you wanted to. You know, a Will Levis and Bryce Young are, aren't very much uh, – they don't have a lot of value right this second and single quarterback, but if they come out and you can – tier Bryce Young or Will Levis with somebody who has a hurt quarterback and maybe one of your tight ends like Laporta like you were saying and you could tear up to another starter that would be in your you know on your on your team I could see something like that but I think at this moment you just don't have the ammo to go out and get anything and I don't necessarily think you need to right this moment I think 
you've got enough um, wishes and, and hopes on your bench here that, you know, Palmer is a good player. Uh, Mike Williams is a good player. Uh, it's not tight end premium, but, you know, Ferguson can put up some points in that second flex. You know, you got some um, hope, hopes and dreams there uh, with Roshan Johnson, Tillman, Mitchell, and Malik Washington, There's there, and, and even Thrash. You know, the one thing I would say is I would petition the league to have a four-round rookie draft and get a taxi squad. Um, other than that, man, I think you're, I think you're, uh, you're in all right shape. I mean, obviously your, your depth is, is needed. Um, and that's why we're saying do the one for two where you get the two back and you send out one because you need a little bit of depth in, in this year's, uh, in the, in the day and age of, of NFL, um, you know, uh, injuries, but uh, I don't, I don't think I would do anything right now. Cause you're not going to get the value on it um, outside of Laporta. I think it was a good call, by big co I could see you doing something with Laporta and, and making, you know, make, making some movement if you wanted to, but Hey, if you're a Laporta truther and you love them, then don't do it. Just, just hold tight and see what happens. Yeah. I think, I think the other option is Roma Dunze. If you want to, if you want to move off of him, there's probably somebody in your league who's got it hot, hot and heavy for Roma Dunze. And I know it's sure. not fun to move off the rookie at this point, but like if you want to get some depth and get, and, and just know that you're not going to blow that pick. And I don't think you would, are i think roma no. is very good you're not blowing it but um, that's a good that's a good point i think that's kind of the glowing object on here to if you wanted to kind of tear down and get some uh you could get you a know, lab you could you could you don't even have to tear to, you, you would be tearing up in points and down in value you could you could pick mm-hmm. up a good veteran who's going to score a lot of points and probably another young guy potentially you could pick up a real if you're trading if you're trading rome you could pick up a really i mean he's getting drafted in front of tank dale kind of guys you could get a tank Dell and a, Co- and a cooper cup and an amari cooper from somebody for rome you know yeah. if they got a bad team and they just happen to have a couple old, uh, like like big d said you know taking higgins and, and trade him in for a couple veterans like i really w- wasn't thinking about it like that but you could get cooper cup and um, or amari cooper and terry mclaurin from the same owner if you got i mean casey and i just had this off season had a team where we were rebuilding and we traded mclaurin and Cooper, Amari Cooper, in the same exact trade, mm-hmm. you know, and just yeah. couldn't wait to get rid of the. Didn't well, yeah, because those... you're you're trying to get rid of these guys, and a whole bunch of different reasons. You know, you you can't. By the time you're ready to sell them, half the league doesn't want to buy them anymore, so you're limited to the suitors. So sometimes it's re- it is hard to get rid of the older guys. So that's kind of what Big Co's referring to is that we we were one willing to sell two older guys for an okay profit because selling one was you know, really difficult. And we had been trying for like a year to get what we thought we should. And finally it was just like, Hey, let's just get, let's put these two together and get a deal done. Mm-hmm. You know? So, um, I think yeah, a lot the, of the times you can find that. The the only thing I would say is that the, um, JT and Brees are not, not tradable assets for me with your team because they're your draft picks. So I, I would hold tight on them unless you get a King's ransom. Um, other than that, like th- those are guys that you could tear off of, but I just wouldn't advise it because of the age and the factor of your, your draft picks. I think it would be the smart thing to hold those guys and, and make a move somewhere else. So. Yeah. And like I said, Kamara is on this team. It's not showing up here. And then you, yeah. Oh yeah. You'd right. Moving feeling to the bench, I guess. Yeah. Um, so. Start starting Kamara. So your starting lineup is studded out with a rookie Rome, mm-hmm. you know, like you have, no questions in your entire starting lineup, which is a big lineup. And to say you have studs, if you take out Thielen and put in Kamara, you literally have pretty much a stud in every position. And and then with Rome being called a stud as a rookie, who's probably not going to produce like, you know, a Brandon Ayuk because we don't expect him to because he's got two other stud wide receivers on the team with him. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, that's 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 good good perspective by both you guys on this situation. Um I, I tearing down from some of those spots like we talked about, but going down from Rome, he's that brand new shiny object. Yeah, get, it's hard to, but I mean, I think you of, could, you could get a lad, you could get a lad and you know, a really, really good player. Like, you know, people pay a lot of money to get up in that spot to draft Rome. We're not telling you to trade Rome. This is just, I'm not telling you to trade Sam Laporta, but you could easily go from Sam Laporta to another good, you have Ferguson. So he's a very solid tight end. He's a top 12 side. I mean, he's, probably going to be a top 10 tight end this year for, for the foreseeable future and some Laporta's a stud there's no doubt about it so i mean if, 
if you if you can stomach getting off of them, you can do some damage. If you can stomach getting off of Rome, you can do some damage. But if you want to yeah. hang on to them, hang on to them. Yeah, London, you got to wait for. I mean, somebody might give you something good for London. Like I said, I, I'm not ever saying that you really need to do much of anything. You need a little depth, but you're you're good to go. Um, but those, you know, I to the right guy maybe, but he probably needs to get playing. T needs probably needs to get playing to to probably get full value and and Drake to really ascend to where you want them to um you need to get and the key here is like good you, play from them you don't have to do anything right the second you can if the if the you can put your feelers out you can start texting people and you don't even have to send the offers if you don't want to or send monster offers if you're sending out sam laporta it needs to be a monster offer coming back if you're sending out yeah. sending out rome you know these guys are only going to get more valuable as the season gets close rome madunze a couple freaking highlight reels and pre and preseason or, you know, just training camp, Roman Dunze, just mossing some cats. You know, it's, the value is not going down on those two guys anytime soon. It's only going to keep keep getting better. So take your time if you're going to tear down off of some of those studs. Take your time and do it right because once they're gone, you're probably not getting them back. Well, and the best news um, for playtime here is he's a patron. So, uh, yeah. you know, as we get further along, you can ask questions again, you know, hop in. Um, Great point. We're always acted over there and uh, we always got your back. So, you know, you did a great move with Kamara. I feel like we are all saying, kind of hold tight um, unless you really want to do something, but I would hold tight. And then as we get going, um, just come back in and, and, you know, hit us up. We'll, we'll we'll take a look at it again and see where we're at in, uh, you know, the week two, week three, week four range. That's it. It's the perks of, of the $5 holler. Come, come see us. There's also a free uh, Discord that you can hop on and, and we'll throw some drafts out to you guys, but you get three extra episodes on the Patreon. If you're not subscribed already, be sure you do. We're going to be going live a ton more with startups and with dynasty questions just like this, which is kind of why we wanted to do this episode to get you kind of integrated of kind of what we'll be trying to do in the future and, and you know, maybe go live for an hour and answer some questions like this um, that we already have and then some live, um, I think, would be a fun show to do and, and something to get rolling as, as well as, well as uh, you know, the mocks and everything that we've been doing. So uh, we appreciate you guys. Good, uh, good discussion with some trades. Wasn't as exciting because sometimes, you know, you send us stuff and sometimes the right answer is don't do anything. And that's not the, the sexiest show per se, but sometimes it's like, hey, man, we got to we got to chill. Here's a couple ideas, but we don't need to get crazy. Right. Yeah. Love that. Sometimes the rosters come in and I can fire off five trades for you right now. And sometimes the first two people, first two teams that we talked about was exactly that let it breathe for a minute yeah yeah you gotta slow and roll just like uh just like me you gotta let it marinate sometimes that's right that's right all right guys we'll catch you next time peace